This is the aftermath of a major Russian strike on the Ukrainian city of Dnipro. At least eight people, including two children, were killed early on Friday when missiles rained down over the eastern city and the surrounding central Dnipropetrovsk region. In retaliation, Kiev says it shot down a Russian strategic bomber it says took part in the long-range strike. These photographs from Telegram appear to show the wrecked bomber in Russia's southern Stavropol region, hundreds of miles from Ukrainian-controlled territory. This is the first time during the two-year-long war that Ukraine has downed a bomber within Russia's borders. While the Russian Defence Ministry confirmed the crash, it said it was due to a technical malfunction. In light of the attack, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called once again for urgent air defences, as the country's supplies dwindle due to a slowdown in Western military aid. The president has himself been visiting troops and inspecting fortifications on the front line near Donetsk, while his foreign minister, Dmitry Kuleba, has been in Italy meeting with the G7 ministers. The West has the capacity to be efficient in all crises. And this, is, this must be clear. It has the capacity, military capacity, financial capacity, but it has to provide Ukraine with all necessary resources as soon as possible to save Europe from a larger war. And this was the main topic of my conversations, and we identified specific steps which Western partners will make to help Ukraine under these circumstances. 25 months into Moscow's full-scale invasion, and Ukraine is on the back foot. In recent weeks, Russia has stepped up its long-range aerial assaults on Ukraine's energy system and other targets. Moscow has been ratcheting up the pressure on Kiev as Russian forces have been slowly advancing in the east. Russia denies targeting civilians during its airstrikes and says the energy system is a legitimate target. Shares of Netflix slid more than 8 percent Friday morning after the streaming service surprised investors by saying it would no longer disclose key subscriber and revenue numbers. The announcement came late Thursday when the company reported earnings. Netflix missed second quarter revenue forecasts and further spooked Wall Street with its decision to withhold quarterly subscriber additions and average revenue per subscriber beginning in the first quarter of 2025. The streaming pioneers moved to hold back those crucial metrics, which have traditionally helped boost its stock price, feeds into analysts' expectations that subscriber growth is waning amid fierce competition. Netflix did handily beat subscriber expectations for the first quarter, as its cheaper, ad-supported plans helped attract 9.3 million new customers, nearly double the forecast of analysts polled by Elseg. But executives have urged investors to focus on overall revenue and operating margins when assessing the company's progress, rather than customer additions. Friday's stock slide also weighed on shares of rivals Roku and Walt Disney. If the losses hold, Netflix could see more than $22 million wiped off its market capitalization. In a bid to end a two-month walkout by doctors, South Korea's government announced a compromise in its medical reform plans on Friday. The government accepted a proposal by major state medical school deans to let them set new admissions for 2025, Prime Minister Han duk su said. The government has made a bold decision. By proactively accepting the state-funded university's dean's recommendations, we're hoping to create a chance to protect medical students, normalize education and resolve the dispute. It also said that President Yoon suk Yeol would meet the opposition leader for the first time after two years in office. The conciliatory moves followed a crushing election defeat for Yoon's ruling party last week. Yoon's refusal to communicate with parliamentary leaders and the standoff with doctors were key issues in last week's legislative elections. To compromise, Han said he accepted a proposal to scale back the increase in the medical school admissions quota and to give universities flexibility in setting their quotas. This was the first shift from the government's plan to increase new medical student admissions by 2,000 a year from next year.
It will eventually add 10,000 more physicians by 2035. Following the government's announcement, the association representing the country's trainee doctors said it had no information to share. However, the protesting physicians have said that the healthcare sector is not short of doctors and that the government's plan falls short of addressing pay and working conditions properly. Yoon's office did not immediately respond to a request for comment on the change in the medical reform plans. Thank you.